p.m. Central Time here in Nashville, and we are graciously welcome our, our second guest, Mr. Seku Smith, Hang Time NBA blog. Seku, what's going on today, man? I'm good, man. How y'all doing? Doing pretty good. Had to play some of that, uh, you know, outcast in the background, getting that Atlanta vibe. You're down there in uh, ATL, man. <laughs> appreciate that. Hey, yeah. no doubt, I'm no doubt. My college life, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime, <laughs> man. Let's jump into it, man. I was reading some of the, you know, stuff on your Hangtown blog, man. Uh, one thing that I noticed here, and what the hell is going on with Dwight Howard, man? I mean, he's mad that they, I mean, really, you know, I don't know what he did in Orlando for him to think that they should retire his jersey. If anything, they should, you know, burn his jersey the way that he left and cause all that turmoil. What's your thoughts on that, Seiko? cool this is jr here quite frankly the white house needs to shut his mouth he's the, the like the rock say he know his role shut his mouth what about his houston rockets the magic were two teams ago why is still on your mind look how you left them you got a coach fired a gm fired change the whole organization for the worst for the in- interim and you want your judge retired you mad because tobias harris has your judge's number dude come on grow up get get your mind right you with, with the lakers one of the best teams in the NBA history, and you st- still want about the Orlando Magic, who you want to leave? Come on. This guy is just a fake, a phony, and a fraud. He's a, he's a big baby. He's everything you don't want in, in a leader. And I feel bad the Rockets went all in on this guy. I mean, maybe him playing second field to James Harden, or he'll do better, but still. Think about it, say, cool. It's the same offense that Antonio ran. So how is he going to be happy in Houston? So talk to us about that. expect because i you know i'm not even gonna do it i'm not gonna go in on dwight howard no more because <laughs> everyone else is taking their shots so let me let me jump to this here something that's closer to home memphis grizzlies you know uh they, they look very good this uh season went to the Memphis conference finals got swept but we all know that they run up to a pretty good team in the san antonio spurs here people in tennessee are expecting that same type of run out of this team uh they added mike miller costa kufis what's your thoughts and should we temper our expectations here in tennessee when we talk about the memphis grizzlies here Outside of the fabric of what you're trying to do. So, mm-hmm. if 
if it works, great. If not, I think the Grizzlies are taking a big risk. They're thinking that they have a program that's bigger and better than the, you know, the pieces that are involved. And I think that's a dangerous thing to assume. You know, last year, the Western Conference race might look totally different if Russell Westerson, you know, get his knee torn up. Yeah. Um, if he stays healthy, maybe Thunder has seemed to get through it, not the Grizzlies. Maybe, you know, Thunder the ones who will play in the finals and not the Spurs. So, I mean, it's, I think the Grizzlies are assuming a lot of things based on last year, and that's dangerous when you, you've never really been in the position of having to show up again, like you said. Those expectations have changed dramatically for the fans. And say, cool, talk about this. Talk about moving moving a seat over. Like Brett Brown moving to the Sixers head coach, Dave Eggie moving over from head assistant to the head coach. Talk about that change over how the relationship with players change from just that one seat over. And talk about in your opinion, what's your opinion on how Lionel Holland's firing went down or leaving the organization mutually went down? How'd you feel about that from looking at with your inside eye? Well, I mean I answered your second question first. I thought it was horrible to be let Lionel Holland you know, leave the way he did it. I put in too much work for you to let him walk out the door. And uh, I think he was the ideal coach for that group of guys. You know, it's, it's a lot of times the coach can be on inconsequential. And other times the coach can be the guy who makes it go. And I, and I think Simon Holmes is that guy. Um, you know, as far as that move, that, that 18 inches you're moving over from that second chair to the first chair, man, that, that's the biggest leap in, in sports. You know, that's that's tougher. That's a tougher transition even than a guy going from a college star to an NBA star, you know, because a lot of times your talent is going to take over. But when you're talking about being an assistant and being a guy who's in the background all the time with the same group of players, and now they have to look at you as the guy running the show, it's, it's not an easy job. And Larry Drew found that out in Atlanta the last few years, mm-hmm. that, hey, it only goes so far, you know, when you've been in an organization, the players have grown accustomed to dealing with you a certain way. Um, certainly landed on the key of Milwaukee. But I think a lot of that is what held that group back. And if the Grizzlies are careful, you know, they're going to run into a thing where, yeah, the players say they respect the guy or they, they say all the right things about him, but when he gets to heat of battle, if they don't trust his word or trust his skills, you know, you're going to see the, the, the absolute disconnect. Yeah, yeah, I mean – it's just one of those things. They're, they're talking about bringing a more up-tempo offense to go along with their grit and grind defense. Uh, and it's, you know, it's hard for me to believe that's going to work in some cases. But, I mean, hey, like I said, they're taking a risk. And it's just one of those things I guess we're going to have to get accustomed to. Uh, let me uh, change gears one more time here. Let's talk about this whole Kobe Bryant thing, uh, you know, his his injury with the Achilles rupture and that. And now he's, uh, you know, the timetable that he's coming back on is, uh, is a little quick, but it seems like he's going to come back as soon as possible. What's your thoughts about that? And they did release those ESPN NBA rankings. They got Kobe at 25th. And, I mean, the Kobe fans are just all up in arms about that. What's your thoughts about that, Sekou? Yeah, I knew the Kobe, I knew the Kobe fans would be a little upset um, when they thought he was, you know, at 25 on that list. And I, you know, I chuckled at it, too, because a healthy Kobe Bryant obviously belongs much higher on that list. But that, if I'm not mistaken, that ranking is based on you know, the projection of what you would do right now based on, you know, yeah. whatever you're doing right now. And Kobe right now is on the shelf. You know, we're not sure when he's coming back. I'm assuming Christmas. Um, I'm planning on being in L.A. for that Christmas Day game. I think that's kind of a drop-dead date for him in terms of if he doesn't come back by Christmas, it really starts getting precarious for the Lakers. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I expect him to do what Kobe always does, man, and that's set up his clinics and, you know, the body odds and, and play above and beyond his means. That's just who he's been his whole career, what he's been about his whole life in terms of basketball, man. And Father Time is, is definitely playing in Kobe's backyard. He's, he's mm-hmm. looking for a spot in the house. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if Kobe's not careful, man, that another serious injuries like this could be the end of his career. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Everybody knows that. But yeah. he might not be able to go out on his own terms at this rate if he, if he takes another – you know, uh, spill or, or has another significant injury to stage career. And uh, say, cool. Uh, talk about what coaches start a season already on the hot seat. Who in your mind needs to start off hot, get have a great season to save their job already? Wow, y'all, y'all are cold blooded, man. We ain't even got done with preseason. Y'all are <laughs> on the hot seat, man. But y'all, um, I think the guy who's really in the crosshairs is Randy Whitman. 
in Washington because there's been so much chatter about that team moving out of the lottery and becoming a playoff team. Um, you don't often get to, to toil, you know, the way he has the past few years with a team that's not making, you know, significant progress. They had a lot of injuries, and I think he's gotten the pass because of that, but he won't have that pass this year. they gotta, they got to compete for a playoff spot. And really, I think they need to, they're going to have to get one in order for Randy Whitman to get that job in Washington if everything stays in the way it is and, and John Wall and Bradley Field remain healthy. Hate to, hate to do it, Seku, but we got to do it, man. You know, some of these guys here, like you said, they got these high expectations going into the season. And speaking of high expectations, everyone that's a Bulls fan around the nation here is just – putting a lot of uh, pressure on Derrick Rose right now. He did look good in the preseason games, you know, that I caught. It appears that he's got that uh, spring back in his step, but he did have to sit out a few games, you know, didn't want the need to uh, be sore or anything like that. What what should Bulls fans do as far as expectations for them? And are they a legit contender to the Miami Heat if uh, Derrick Rose is able to come back to MVP form? Well, I think if he's able to play at that level with what we saw to his – Sporting cast last year without him, they're definitely in that contender range, you know, with the Indiana Pacers, potentially the Brooklyn Nets, and New York Knicks behind the Miami Heat needs the conference. The difference that they have that I don't think any of other teams have is that they've got a group of guys who have, you know, tasted that thing, you know, even more so than the Pacers last year because Danny Granger wasn't, you know, he wasn't on the floor for the Pacers last year. Um, the Bulls have a group that's gone toe to toe with the Heat and knows exactly where they stand. I think the Pacers found that out a little bit last year, but still not sure. I think the, the struggle, the struggle Heat they had last year against the Pacers was more about the Heat than it was the Pacers. Yeah. The Bulls have an opportunity to impose their own will because of the way they play and the fact that Derrick Rose is a superstar. Joe Kim Noah has come light years, you know, uh, offensively from what he was early in his career. I think that's a matchup. With all the guys, you know, being healthy and, and all things being equal, the Miami Heat would really have to sweat out. I think the Bulls have a, a great nucleus, a great coach in Tom Thibodeau, obviously, and a great player in Derrick Rose to build on. And a Seku, finally, before you get you out of here, talk about the Atlanta Hawks hiring new coach Mike Budenholzer, Josh Smith leaving for edge, going to Detroit, which – I feel sorry for, for the Palace Rams, all the bricks up there. So he got that going, going with Paul Millsap, bringing back Kyle Corver, Jeff T, Lou Williams coming back off the injury. Surprisingly matching Jeff T's contract. I thought he was definitely gone. So talk about the Atlanta Hawks, uh, looking high, looking this season, the preseason going forward. And, you know, at least the Hawks are trying to turn things up at the Holiday Factory. Bit Tigger's their official DJ now, so at least they did one thing right. turned over basically all of the roster except for, you know, three or four guys. Um, you know, and, and I love Al Horford and his game and his, you know, the fact that he's going to be, you know, the center of attention there, but he's going to have to adjust the plan without Josh Smith around to take all the heat when things go right. You know, mm-hmm. Josh was always an easy target and a nice scapegoat to have if you're Al Horford. And not that Al was throwing Josh under the bus, but people did it for him. You know, people would do it whether he wanted to or not. And when you talk about the guy that has to be the goat when things go wrong and be the hero when things go well, that's a burden that not every player is built to take. You know, Joe Johnson tried it. You know, he got paid like the guy who could take that burden and he really couldn't hold up to it. Yep. Josh tried it, you know, and he struggled with, you know, responsibility that comes with doing that. Now we're going to get a chance to see if Al Horford can lead this team and be the face of this franchise through thick and thin and, you know, when good and bad. And if he's not capable of handling it, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing come apart. If he, if if Al does what I think he can do, though, and, and that he's a he's a stand-up dude on and off the floor and, and a true pro, I think you'll see him step up to the challenge and lead this team. And I don't know if they're going to be a playoff team this year, but I think they'll be a competitive team, and that's all you can ask for when you've made as many changes as they have. Absolutely. Well, Seiko, this has been fun, man. Hopefully, we can do it as the season approaches a little bit closer. First game of the season for you fans. Out-